Hey, and welcome to our latest uh, Go commentary, AlphaGo versus AlphaGo. This is number 24. We are coming to you live from the National Go Center's e-journal broadcasting facilities. I'm so much better than uh, the e-journal's broadcasting closet, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or the, the pizza oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't fired them up. Uh, Papa John's oven's downstairs yes. yet. Uh, Chris Garlick, of course, with me. Uh, Michael Redmond in person. Yes. Good to have you here. My pleasure. Send you back yeah, to yeah. Uh, Japan in a couple mm -hmm. of days. Yeah. But uh, uh, good to have you here. Uh, we're going to do this. Just a reminder uh, that if you enjoy these commentaries, and we've heard from uh, many of you that you uh, do, and uh, we are going to, we're, we're going to make our best effort. I think we're coming mm -hmm. up by one more, and we'll be almost halfway there, right? We yes, that is fifty. 50 games. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We're getting number. All right. So this is number 24. So, um, but anyway, membership. Join the AGA. USGO.org and uh, get uh, join the AGA, get all your, your uh, Go friends to uh, join it as well. It really makes a big difference. I uh, really appreciate that. Also, if you are anywhere in the Metro DC area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, uh, come on down to the National Go Center here in Washington, DC. We'll have a link below. Uh, they've got classes. You can come by in the evenings. You can just come on and play Go and check out the Go Center. And hey, what the heck, you might wind up in our broadcast facility. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. We're making it up as we go along. All right. Okay. Michael, is, uh, you got your all caffeinated, you're all ready to go here? Yeah, I think so. What is the storyline on uh, number 24 here? Uh, well, um, it could be that uh, the way humans play is changing, but mm -hmm. um, uh, AlphaCo here is looking very close to what humans might think of playing. It, it is playing some 3-4 points, so it makes it different from uh, what a lot of the AIs are doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it turns into a game where there's there is a lot of fighting um, but the territory is balanced as always, and into the end game, you, there's still some groups that are sort of ambiguous about how whether they're alive or not. There's 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 some issues with a lot of the groups, and so you see the the two sides settling that as mm -hmm. they do the end game. So it affects the end game, the way the end game is played, which makes it really interesting for me. All right, well let's take a look at it. So we start with. Um, Let's see, let's just go forward a few moves. So black is playing three, four <coughs> points and, um, and plays this big shimari. So this is a move that master played, and this is the master version in its final, well, the final stage that we know of, mm -hmm. you say. Um, so it's the strongest, probably the strongest ver part of, uh, version of the master version. Mm -hmm. um, and it likes to play these uh, two-space corner enclosures, which are popular by humans, are popular moves for humans also. Um, and, but it always plays this um, attachment underneath it, A, which is a point where humans would usually play a, a pincer, B or C. Um, so that's, that's something that um, is common with all of the uh, goal-playing computer programs. They seem to just love they, they like territory more than we expect sometimes. Mm. Like AlphaGo will play these big shimaris and you sort of expect some big moyo, but then it just goes and grabs the corner territory. So against a high kakari, high approach move, it does like to play this attachment underneath. <coughs> and a lot of human professionals like to play that too, so it's, it's the same, it's quite similar. And so we have this joseki here. Um, this move um, playing in the 4-4 point once, um, this was not so common before AlphaGo, but it has become more common by human players. So there's a lot of stuff that has been picked up by humans here. And again, this low kakari is, especially when um, the, the player playing this approach move is, has the black stones and tends to have the initiative in um, leading the fight, you might say. Uh, this low kakari is very common and black is looking at the pressing move at A. So white answers that. And so all of the ideas that have um, been shown here in these first few moves have been picked up uh, by professional players. Mm -hmm. And some of them were new. Some of, were, were them, some of the ideas that I just mentioned, or they were old, they were, they were existent before AlphaGo, but they just became more prominent because of AlphaGo. And so Black plays this high extension. And this is where um, <coughs> almost always the extension would have been low. There's this idea that when you're inside, the left side is sort of dominated by white up to this point, 
let's just go back a move. White has both of the corners, <coughs> and so uh, um, an advantage of two moves on the left side. Black is invading white side. Usually, you try to make a base as quickly as possible. So the low extension. Right. I didn't even make that. Well, let's make it a variation. The low extension here. It's it's easier to make a living shape that way. Sure. But um, AlphaGo likes to play high. It's another thing that was picked up by humans. It, it's a bit more difficult, but it's also lighter and towards the center. So sometimes it works. It feels more active, right? Now, yes, it's more active. Mm. Um, this is a position where I look at this position. I marked it up on the next move, but um, I, I see two areas in the board that look big to me. Okay. And then one side that doesn't look so big. And to name those, I would say the upper side. Um, for instance, a move around here. This looks like a big move. Sure. Um, it attacks black's corner enclosure <coughs> and it develops from white's le upper left corner. Also, this looks like a big move. This is um, extending on the left side and invading, well, threatening to invade Black's left mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, both of these would look big, uh, the upper side and the left side. And I would be sort of um, undecided as to which is the better move. It mm -hmm, would be I guess. a difficult choice. That they probably don't play in either place. It right? doesn't play in either place. <laughs> of course not. And yeah, you're, you're getting used to this program. <laughs> and it plays what looks like, um, I would be um, pressed to say whether this side is even bigger than the right like side. Like that wouldn't even have been on your list of places it wouldn't to play, been, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I might decide to, I might even have choos, chosen, if sure. the upper side and the left side were ruled out, um, maybe the right side. Wow. So um, it's a very, it's not the biggest move. It's obviously not the biggest move, mm. but it does make White's move at A bigger than it was before. It adds to the value of a move at A. <coughs> and so my take on this is that um, by playing here, AlphaGo has equalized the size of A and B. Oh, so now I they're see. the same. Because before that, I, I, to be honest, I think that the upper side is bigger. Okay. okay. So after playing here, now, because if white does play that move here, then um, the Kakari will reduce white's potential on this mm -hmm, area. So mm -hmm. the Kakari becomes an effective move. So white plays here first. Uh, that, by doing so, white has made A and B Mi. So it's an interesting point where white has played a smaller move. Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident in saying that this is in itself is the smaller move, but has made A and B me I. I, I, doing so. I really like that. I, I think that's so it's very sort of clever. interesting. Yeah. I, I can't really say it's bad. It is smaller, and I wouldn't have thought <laughs> to play there. So black plays here, um, and white plays the upper side. So those were interchangeable points. White plays the upper side now. There's a bit of pressure being putting on black in the upper right. So black plays this extension, very natural. Um, protect, uh, not only giving some space, extra area to the upper right shimari, um, weakening white on the right side, and sort of preparing to invade A. A is a point that I would be looking at next. And of course, B is a very popular joseki shape. That's gonna, we're gonna see it in the game. Um, so white invades, and black does this thing. So this is um, this was popular <coughs> before before AlphaGo. It was popular, and AlphaGo plays it a lot. Mm -hmm. So now it's just super popular. Like um, everyone is just after playing the Kakari. Um, uh, let's shall we mark it? Um, sure. After playing this Kakari here, like everyone is just thinking to play this Ske in the hand, honey in the corner. I'm just gonna ask it. Uh, Nathan, get me some water. I'm good. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, normally white would play this way, and uh, this is the joseki that one might expect. White would probably invade again at C. So, uh, so this nice, is nice sequence, right? Mm -hmm. As far as the lower left corner is concerned, it's a very natural sequence, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and white probably has some potential with invading at C. So that's what I would expect. Uh, but here, AlphaGo plays a very unusual move by playing the double honey. Mm. And this, is, this was also a move, it was a move before AlphaGo, um, and it very strongly defends the corner territory. And the point is that, for instance, if let's just add one more various, if white just connects here um, on the third line, then this um, hanging connection shape gives black a, mul a multitude of eyes you might say. It mm -hmm. gives black the option of playing one honey here, 
Um, White's not going to do this, but um, this is very easy for black to make a living safe. Sure. And the idea behind this move is that when black does, uh, in fact, in the game black played the hanging, white gets to play an Atari here. And to, so black's going to um, destroy black's wooden eye shape. Thank you. <coughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, we got our Tacoma 2005 Go Congress. So this must be the uh, the National Go Center's Go Congress mug collection. Yep. And you've got a uh, Tacoma 2013. So 29th US Go Congress. So we have the we have the Tacoma cups. Yeah. All right. Just in time. Thank you, Nathan. So let's see. Um, White didn't do either of those, but played that one. And um, this is a very dangerous looking move. Yeah, I would, um, be, I would not be brave enough to play that. Black does have some potential to cut here and break through here. But actually, there's two problems with this uh, move. One of them is that uh, black is sort of pointed in the wrong direction. Like the lower side, as I was saying, is close. Um, this, this group in the lower right, might as well mark it now I've said it. This group in the lower right is a very solid and low group that black has. Um, so because this is so strong and solid, it means that any white move in the area is not so important. And that means, in general, the lower side is not the most, the biggest part of the board. Kind of over -concentrated yeah, too, so right? black is playing a lot of moves towards the lower side, <coughs> and white has the right side, a strong position on the, I'm sorry, the left side, mm. and gets to invade here. And uh, there's something called the uh, tewari, uh, um, and that is, you take a position like this, and you see these marked stones there that um, look sort of super, they're, they're sort of extra. Mm -hmm. And so you can say those three black marked stones, um, you can imagine that they were <coughs> um, an exchange with the three marked white stones, and the position with the non marked stones is maybe about even, but those stones are all bad exchanges for white, Got for it. black, that is. So it's an, a gain for white there. White has a very good shape. And the lower side is sort of the wrong area for black to be surrounding. So it's not so good for black. So if black cannot do that, then black's um, options are limited. Actually, black plays the hanging connection. White plays here. If black now connects, then black will not have ideal eye shape. Even if black plays here, it, black still needs to get an eye on the second line to be able to live. So, um, and what black actually does, um, in human play before AlphaGo and with AlphaGo is black plays this move, threatening a double Atari, white captures a stone, and white has taken away black's base, so that's what white gained, but black also gets uh, the extra forcing move at A, and so has a lot of extra stones on the outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the question that happens now is that black is getting extra speed in moving out into the center, so is this valuable? Or is the fact that white has taken away black's base valuable? So it's it's a, a big question is who is going to be attacking here? Mm -hmm. There's also the fact that since white is so strong in the corner, um, the following moves here have lost some of their value. So black is not going to continue with this group. So it's going to be that question I raised as to whether black is going to uh, be supreme, um, have a good shape in the center, mm -hmm. or is white going to be <coughs> able to attack black? That's going to come in the future. Okay. And in fact, the game heats up so much on the right side of the board that it's going to be far in the future. Wow. So there, there's going to be a long period of time in this game where we, we don't really know whether this was a success for white or black. Wow. So the game continues with black uh, playing this invasion on the upper side. And um, basically, um, once black had played this extension to strengthen the uh, corner enclosure on the upper right, uh, this was um, this invasion on the upper side was a move that was in the back of my mind all the time. So it, it, this is uh, not only an effect, attack on white stone on the upper side, it's also uh, putting some pressure on white's position in the upper left corner. So, um, okay, so uh, for instance, white uh, could invade here. Now, that's one thing that I would be thinking of doing. Uh, if black plays on top, something like this might happen. But this would lead to a co um, Just to just to go back, um, once White plays the invasion, it's very natural and probably necessary to play this wedge move. Mm. Uh, black covers if Black covers from above. What? Let's do that variation too. You know? I didn't put so many variations into this, but now I'm getting carried away. Um, how unusual! How unusual! <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good for White 
because uh, why is establishing a fairly, for instance, like this, why is establishing a strong group on the left side and putting even more That's pressure on black yeah, on the lower left? Yeah, this is beginning to answer so, that question you were yeah, asking. So this is working group. for white. So that's why I um, wanted black to cut underneath. And black takes the one stone. And here both sides are trying to play the optimal moves. Also white does want to play this Atari here before handling the stone on the fourth line. But black's not going to connect this co. No, of course. And so we get this into this complicated co-thread, co-fight. Black does have a good one good, good co-thread. <coughs> and now like there's a lot of stuff that can happen. And I decided to stop the variation at this point mm. because white can connect at C, in which case black would connect at D maybe, and black would already start to be having a, a good good position, um, even though the code would continue, it would continue to be very difficult. Uh, otherwise, at this point, white could play co threats at A or B. Um, and I have the feeling that might be um, a good result for black, but it's, it's, it'll be reasonably close. It'll be hard to say. So um, the judgment of this position is actually pretty difficult. I was just thinking, you know, uh, this morning uh, you did a, a number of commentaries for uh, amateur players brought their games here to the National Go Center. So we looked at, I don't know, it might have been as many as a dozen different amateur games, all different levels, Don, mm -hmm. uh, Q players and so forth. And one of the things I was struck, because it's been a while since, uh, since we looked at, at amateur games, yeah. and one of the things that struck me was that you know, except perhaps at the very highest levels of, of amateur players, I mean, look at, look at, I don't know what number move this is, but it's the first 30 moves probably, mm -hmm. right? About 30 moves. And already, for the <laughs> already, it's incredibly complicated. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, when you were looking at the amateur games today, one of the things that you said, and it was meant as a compliment, but people were very, playing very correct, sort mm -hmm. of simple, Mm -hmm. We're not getting into these kind of complicated, yeah. you know, things where mm -hmm. somebody could collapse or so forth. Oh, yeah. and I'm, I'm just looking at this mm -hmm. and I'm going, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, actually, AlphaGo didn't jump in there either. Oh. But it's already going to be a very complicated yeah. system. There's all these various parts of the board that are sort of undecided at this point. Wow. So White jumps in here. White jumps in there. Interesting. Um, now this is a point that's um, it's also interesting because um, this attachment is a move that has been played a lot in recent years, <coughs> but it depends sort of on the ladder. So if we look at the ladder, because White often plays the cut here next, mm -hmm. and this um, and if Black d does not have a good ladder, Black would be pulling back, and White would have all sorts of forcing moves against, uh, let's mark the stone, white would have all sorts of forcing moves that would threaten this black stone mm. here. And it would make it possible for white to get a nice shape there. But as it turns out, um, black has a favorable ladder when black does this and comes from underneath. And this ladder is going to go straight to, towards, um, I'll mark this black stone. It's going to go towards this black stone and hit it. It's going to miss, miss the white stone on the left side. Mm. And so, um, so the ladder favors black, so white cannot do that. Um, so, uh, so that idea of, of playing an attachment here is not really <coughs> working for white. And so AlphaGo plays a very human looking move, like this is what we were doing before AlphaGo showed us that attachment on the 4-4 point. <coughs> that was started by AlphaGo, AlphaGo Zero. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe Master just doesn't know about that, <laughs> um, but AlphaGo Zero was doing that that attachment uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a, a very human-like move. Like it's it's a way for White to make some eye space for that stone on the upper side that was isolated sort of. And at this point, White White has already pretty much established a living group. Like R White really needs at some point to play an Atari at A to mm -hmm. have be a hundred percent alive. But AlphaGo is keeping that in reserve because there are other things White might do. For instance, let's just mark a point for that. Let's, um, sometimes in the end game, White will play from this side right. to get some extra points. Um, but depending on the status of this group on the upper side, sometimes White might want to play an Atari A, which is usually a forcing move. You know, there, there are exceptions, but like AlphaGo likes to keep us in doubt. Uh, so Black plays an Atari, and now there's this move. I don't think I can remember any cases of anyone playing this, this move. Um, it's a common joseki on the right side, mm -hmm. but I don't, 
uh, I don't remember seeing, like, black would usually invade here. Um, sometimes black can invade on the, invade on the second line here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are the sure. moves that um, you can commonly see. Um, this one works, like, if white plays here, black plays here, and can come underneath. Even if white cuts black off, this is a position where eventually black can connect underneath. Mm -hmm. Black's probably going to cut white first, but um, it's safe for black to do that. Uh, this one is something I've never seen before. White plays a honey underneath, black plays the double honey. So there is the threat here that black is threatening to cut white off. Um, and white just plays a double honey. This is a really, this is a good suji move. It's a good shape move. Um, normally you might expect white to cut here. Um, but in this case, black's going to extend down. Sarari here, threatening to connect to the corner. White might play here to capture it. Now this black, these two stones are dead. But this is actually good for black because white only has one eye so far. And black has potential to squeeze um, with this move. Mm -hmm. um, and, and eventually white will be forced to play this move to get a living shape. Right. And so this is going to be a satisfying fight for black. So in the game, uh, white plays this double honey. It's a spectacularly good suji move, good shape move. And black cuts here. And we get into this fight in the center of the board. White cannot really afford to throw away those two stones. So white cuts here and goes after the one black stone. Uh, black saves the main group. And so at this point, uh, we have um, a weak white group in the center, um, a weak white group on the right side, and some weak, weak black stones in between. So everything is weak. And we're going to see it. It's, it, it could affect what happens on the left side of the board, but that's, that's in the future, future still. So white plays here. This is a good shape. Sure. And um, actually, black didn't do it. It is an option for black to... Um, this is the game move. It is an option for black to push through here. This mm -hmm. is what a strong fighting player would first think of. White will cover. Black cuts. Uh, white moves out. And now black can play on the outside. Um, but it turns out black is sort of um, surrounding an area that was earthly no man's land sort of mm -hmm. it's not such the lower side is not the most valuable place and if black gets careless and <coughs> plays too many moves there then, then the center <coughs> black group the group in the center is going to be in danger aye, aye, so aye. this is just an example of black messing up here uh, it's not actually going to happen this way but this would this is a kind of easy to understand example where black has just collapsed so black didn't do that um, and white covered here. So this, in a way, it makes sense. There, there is still the idea that black, maybe black could have pushed through once and then done, done something similar in the center. And then play away. Yeah, but um, it's really hard to say, evaluate that and say which would have been better. Black crawls once. And then uh, we can see black is now attacking white on the right side of the center. Looks, it looks sort of scary for white, but it actually is not so, such a big deal. Um, the whole question is, um, how is this going to affect the left side? Um, because white's group in the lower right now is not so weak. White has a potential eye. Let's mark, some, mark off the board a little bit. White has a potential eye in this area. This area looks like it's, it could easily develop into a white eye. And white is sort of into the lower side also. So it's going to be difficult for black to attack that, that group. So it's just what happens with the center. So white starts with this forcing move here and jumps out. Black is still trying to get some extra stones from mm -hmm. the center. Actually, um, this was, you usually attack with a knight's move. Sure. Um, it's, it's, there's a proverb about it. It's black can afford to play a bit loosely uh, just because black is in the attacking stance. But I would suggest that maybe this is an exception where black could have done the more direct attack like this to get a, a stronger shape in the center. Because the whole idea is black wants to create some thickness uh, to have an advantage on the fighting on the left side. So if black plays A and B, this sequence gives black a fairly strong position in the center. Um, white might continue with the invasion at C, but on the whole, black seems to be, um, seems to have the initiative in the fighting on the left side. What happened in the actual game was really exciting because um, white got fairly aggressive here. Like white played uh, 
play this exchange first. Um, and then white plays this move. And what white is aiming at is that if black answers like this, the very natural move, white's going to play this attachment. Yeah, I was wondering about that one. And white has two eyes. Oh, how clever. What's more, black has to add a stone here. So white has sente. White, white also has some potential with eventually moving out with that stone. I did, yeah. So this is actually white's alive with sente. And um, so it, this is pretty good for white when you consider that it started out with black trying to attack white. Mm -hmm. And so this is a failed attack, really. This is why I was showing this other variation where black is getting a much better sure. position in the center. Sure. So black um, obviously doesn't want that to happen, so black pulls back. And so something really different happened. And it's hard for me to say whether uh, to, to compare it with this diagram. I think I like this one better. But we're going to see what happened in the game. There are some merits to the game variation, too, mm. of course. It's AlphaGo. So black covers at this point. But for you, that's just sort of a starting point. You know, yeah, you got yeah. to it, prove it, right? Right. Um, <coughs> black plays the honey on top of two stones. And we can see, again, Black's trying to build a wall towards the left side of the board. Mm -hmm. And what my point, my counter-argument against AlphaGo would be that um, something that a lot of weaker players just don't realize, um, sometimes a wall is not the same meaning, it, um, it's not the same as having thickness. And so Black has a lot of so stones forming a wall mm -hmm. towards the left. But um, you're going to see a lot of cutting points, so it's not actually a strong position. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to see white attacking this wall of black stones. Mm -hmm. And so there's this one lo lone white stone on the left side, and it's going to turn out that that one stone that white has on the left side of the board is about strong, as strong as all those black stones that are forming this mm -hmm. huge wall. And so it's, um, it's a case where just a wall of stones is not necessarily strong. It has to have eyes, or it has to have a strongly connected shape to be a, a what you would call thickness. Just sometimes influence. a wall is not the same as thickness. It's you're, not the same. You're, you're not making any sort of political commentary here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Sorry, talking folks. about that. I wall, didn't say no. that. Okay. I didn't say that. We're I'm moving not, on I'm not here. talking about. Okay. It's all good. We're just uh, talking about go here. Right. And Black just played a really exciting move. So you're not. Um, you're not supposed to strike here. Sorry. Yeah. Black cut here. <laughs> now this move is nice because it's. Um, it looks like a really strange move, doesn't it? It does. Um, it, 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 I, I'm trying to think of how many. How many? Uh, actually, going back to the initial move that you said had never been played before, that one looked like a clicko, mm -hmm. and now this one looks like a clicko. What black is doing here is black is uh, obviously white's not going to pull away from this. White has to push to capture the, to push through here to capture yes, the stones. Black is building momentum to connect up to that marked stone. Yeah. Because like if black di just did something like this, there would still be some distance between that stone and the stone on the upper side. Right. And black's not really connected. So black is building momentum here. Obviously, white cannot just take the one stone. No, that would be no, really that's painful. Disastrous, yeah. So white pushes through, and black is connecting up like this. So this is a nice sequence where that's black connects very up. nice. And white jumps out. So white has a cutting point at A and has a cutting point at B. And so this, this is where I'm, the wall I'm talking about. This mm -hmm. is a wall, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to call it thickness. In fact, um, so I could invent a new, new word and call it thinness. A wall, <laughs> so, is a wall that has thinness. A wall that has it's thinness. A thin it's wall. a thin wall. Wow, what a concept. This is it. Um, so Because I, I would have, I mean, it looks, it mm -hmm. looks thickish. Look at those cutting points. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but the good point for black is that black is completely connected up to the marked stone there and has can have some ideas of, of attacking white in the upper mm -hmm, left corner. Mm -hmm. So I think it sort of evens out. And so just to go back, I think I could flash back to that uh, that variation I was showing. Maybe uh, it's this one. Fun. I get to I get to see you actually jumping around in the trees. Yeah, you see how I do it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little peek behind the curtain here. It's comparable to this one. Um, it's very <coughs> different, but like this one is where black doesn't have all of those weak points that mm -hmm. I was talking about. Uh, but on the other hand, black is not connected up to that position, that stone on the upper side. I'll mark it just to make sure people know. It, black has not um, saved that stone yet, 
So there's uh, pr there are pros and cons to to this position mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So um, <coughs> I, I I'd say that it probably evens out. So there are weaknesses here for black. It's much more like AlphaGo to play this kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So black continues um, with this forcing move. This actually um, isn't doing much to reduce white's eye space. It's counterproductive in that way because white actually has uh, a potential eye on the right side mm -hmm. now. But um, because black's lower right corner is sort of isolated, especially if white gets uh, to this mark point, I'm going to mark a point here. Here, if white covers here, then black really um, the extra space that black's getting by playing this hanesugi on the second line is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it's okay to play that, I think, and it gains territory for black. So, um, so black continues with this. We can see that. Black is trying to manage the weakness of his stones by threatening to attack, attack White yeah, at the that's same a nice time. Move. And White, uh, this is kind of a shape move, hitting a weak point in Black's shape, and Black covers by playing here, and then White cuts here. So White is, it's okay for White to leave this White group in the lower right. Um, some people might be nervous about it, but uh, let's just uh, give a little explanation. There's if white plays at this point, that'll be one eye on the right side. So white has a potential eye there. If white plays at this point, um, this or this is usually going to be a sente eye in this general area in the center. So white has one eye there and can make an eye on the right side. So that that in itself would should lead to a living shape. Mm -hmm. And of course, white's sort of into the right, the lower side. So for the time being, this group is okay. But what black has accomplished is that black has added stones to the center group which will make it easier for black to handle. In fact, um, yeah, so it's, it's still the same thing. This is where I did that little commentary in the, in the SDF file, it seems. So if white has an eye, if white plays at A, obviously white can still escape with B or make an eye there, mm -hmm. and white has a potential eye at C. So white has enough eyes. And, but when black plays here, now I can say that this, this black group in the center is pretty much okay. It's, right. it's just about yeah, a lot. pretty solid. Mm -hmm. And then white plays here. But of course, now at this point, everything for both sides, it's, everything is uncertain. Um, so white, after white has, let's see, uh, I might as well start at A. A is the black weak group. That's a weak group still. Right. Um, B is not a lie. The, the, whole, the whole group there that includes the stone B. That's not a lie. Has no eyes. It has no eyes at all. Um, white's group, uh, when white plays at C, um, Black has to maintain the connection here between this uh, this stone and the stone at sure. B. So, so black has to, that's still a large knight's move difference. Yeah. It means that black's not going to be able to maintain uh, what you might have thought of as territory on the mm -hmm. left side. It's mm -hmm. not territory anymore. Once white plays C, black's not going to maintain that. That means white's group at C is is fairly strong. But of course, white's corner group at D is not alive. So we have four groups that are not alive on the left side of the board. And of course, white E, um, that sometimes comes into the equation because if black can reinforce uh, his group, um, the most simple way would, like for instance, if black has a stone here, then white has to immediately try to live. Mm -hmm. And then if black has a lot of stones in this area, that will change the status of white's eye in the center area here, um, in this, this area. Um, it'll change the status of that eye. So there's a lot of things, if black gets extra eyes, extra stones in this area, that could affect white's group at E also. So there's a lot of groups that people would have to be keeping track of if playing this game. And of course AlphaGo, AlphaGo probably doesn't have any problem with that, but I don't know. So black starts to attack white in the upper right, upper left corner. And white starts to surround black on the left side. And this wow. is where a lot of people would get really uh, upset about that black group and start to struggle inside the white net, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so what AlphaGo does is it starts to play from the outside and says, go ahead and sur surround me. And Seems totally counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, yes. But it's something I was talking about a little bit before because black is preparing to attack white in the lower right. So black is actually ah. playing these moves to threaten white in the lower right. And we're going to see how that works because okay. in the following. And also, there's a second thing is that black has an idea or has a plan to, to make, um, make life for the left, left side group 
uh, with an enhancement in A. And so that, that's going to work out fairly well, and we're going to see that in action too. So I like yeah, um, getting busy. explaining that now would be really, really complicated. So we're, we're going to uh, talk about that when it happens. So white, uh, obviously white has, wants to connect up too. So white plays this way to connect. And again, black plays one more preparatory move. At this point, already it's like a, it's a check on the white group in the lower right. This is already an attack. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, let's have white play something. This would be a big move on the left side. And black plays here. That's how, so I figure how you start that. Now this is no longer an eye. Um, black pulls back and can kill the white group. So this is really dangerous for white. And so what's the difference? The difference is that black has a lot of stones in the area. It means it's easier for black to connect up like this. So those three marked stones made the difference there in this variation. And there's another, there's other version, um, but I think the game will demonstrate the other variation because white plays here. This is another move that, um, without the three mark stones, would have forced black to play to answer something on the left, right? And so normally you would expect black to be answering something like that, of course. And then white would get this forcing move right. and have a, an eye in center. Right. But actually, because of all of those marked stones there, black can extend this direction. Really? And there's no problem oh, no, at there's all. Nowhere, you won't know where to go. Huh? Nothing. That is so cool. But White did play this sequence because White wants to play the peep here. So that, that was full for the peep. <laughs> um, uh, and then White covers here. And, and so once White has played that, let's just do the peep once more. This peep. Once White's played this, White doesn't need those four stones from A anymore. So we're going to see White immediately sacrifice them to make a lie. So, those four stones are suddenly irrelevant. Whatever, yeah. And that, yeah, 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 the, the fluidity there is something that some humans have trouble with. It's, it's something that uh, prof human professionals are good at also. Mm. But especially uh, weaker players would have trouble throwing away those four stones. Mm. But it's, and it's, it's okay not, for all It's not small. So what's the status of the white group now? White does have a potential eye on the right side. Let's just use some marking tools again. It has a potential eye here, or actually white would play here to make the potential eye. Um, black shape in the center with these, these stones here. Black still has sort of a weak shape here. So actually if white plays a move here, white will have a, an eye there also. Black will not be able to feel all the liberties from the outside. Mm. So white has an eye there. And white has, um, so white has two potential eyes. That adds up to one eye. Mm -hmm. And then white has an eye on the lower side um, in, in this area, somewhere around here. So it's okay. Wow. So, so this is how it turned out. Yeah. Oh, so, so this is where I explained in the SCF file. And so now black moves to the left side. White covers and black plays the honey. And uh, this, is, this is a position that's a bit um, tactical. It's hard to read out maybe. Uh, but you have to think of what might happen if white plays here and captures the one stone. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a very challenging problem. Black cuts, white connects. And then just capturing the one, one stone there uh, would not be so good because black cannot break through and mm -hmm. black still has issues with making life. So black will push through here. It's pretty much forced. Um, and white can kill the black group, basically. Um, black can force from this side. And after this, black is still threatening to make a lie. So um, white will probably play here. If white does not do that, um, then black would be able to play this and have a forcing move here. And if white plays on this side, then uh, this whole white group on the left side would become a, a co. Mm -hmm. So that would be bad. Uh, it would be uncertain for white. What black has co threats uh, against the white group in the lower right. This, this group here is going to provide a lot of co threats for black. So the co would be bad for white. And I'm assuming that the, the territories are pretty well balanced at this point, right? Uh, I can't say. I have to show you some more moves. To, okay. let, let's say white kills the black group on the left side. This mm -hmm. looks really bad for black, sure actually. Um, but now, now black's um, got a stronger position in the upper left area, and it's going to be able to kill the, the white group. So the black just plays these forcing moves here. White has to live on the lower side. So now the lower side, white, the lower right white group is alive. 
and finally black will play at f mm. to kill kill that white group. This is actually it looks um, although it looked like a disaster for black on the left side there. Um, if black gets to play f first, it, it's a pretty even trade and actually looks slightly better for black mm. uh, when I tried to count the, the territory. So that was uh, difficult, even for me. I think it was difficult to work that out, but I, I, I decided that it was correct for white to back off here. And finally, black. So black has a living shape, but you can see that there's this, um, this co there. Um, so now white gets to play at C, but there, you have to remember there's this co shape on the left side here. White can at some point mm -hmm. take this co mm -hmm. and to a certain degree harass the blacks, the black group on the left side. And that's what kind of going to become an issue because, it, as always, it's a very close game. Mm -hmm. It's quite true of most of the AlphaGo games. And for black to back down from this code is probably going to be a lost game. The most important thing is uh, by pulling back at A, white has gotten sent A to, the, to protect the upper left corner with C. And so white continues this way, uh, forcing move. And now white now can push through at A. So um, basically, white has established the connection at B by playing here. And so we're sort of in, entering the end I'm game. Just thinking this is the this looks like one of those typical things where it kind of uh, things look like they're settling out and kind of they are settling out. But there's a lot of issues that well. Um, I sort of, uh, in the uh, variation before, I was showing you a, a, an example of how white lives in the lower right area. Sure. But that's one thing that's going to happen in the end game situation. Also, black's group on the left side is a bit weak. Uh, black's group in the upper left corner has not made its eyes yet. I was just trying to figure out where those uh, eyes are. Where those eyes are, out. yeah. I, mean, I see one in the uh, You see one left. in the corner, right? Yeah, so corner. Uh, black started by doing that eye. Uh, actually, black has a potential eye at B. So that, that's the, the eye that might be a bit difficult to see. Um, um, let's just do that then. Yeah, For instance, um, the black already has an eye in the corner, right, but right, only right. one eye. For instance, if, if it was just this place, white would be able to kill it with sure. this sequence. But black does have one eye. Um, would probably not even play that move. But then there's... Um, Let's see, how shall we do it? Like if black, um, uh, if black plays here and here, now if black plays here, black cannot really cut the white group off because, um, well, this is sort of bad for white, but um, <coughs> black has to add a stone here eventually. So it's not as if black can kill the white group. But the point is that black has this forcing move here and can make an eye here. So this is where black has a, a kind of a hidden second eye here. Uh, oh, which is sorry. sort of hard. I can, yeah, I can yeah. see the sequence. Yeah, but for the time being, um, black is sort of threatening that white group. So white has to play this. Once white has played this exchange, then um, then it's, it's it's more difficult for black to attack white because if black plays here now, now white can cut through with sente. So that would not work for black. So black, white really needed that exchange of this stone for black stone, and the black stone is still in the same same point. So for instance. If white does that, black will still be using this forcing move to make an eye um, in right. the center. So that, that's, that's how black is alive. Okay, so white pushes through at A. Um, that's a big territorial move. Mm -hmm. um, and the court B is, is going, going to be an issue now. Black continues with this move. This is the biggest move on the board. And white has to make a light. Um, captures the four stones. And white has an eye at A, and two potential eyes at uh, B and C. But the, the eye at C, it, it sort of depends on a number of things. And by capturing these four stones, black has made it, um, for the time being, it's, it's uh, difficult for white to make an eye at C. So white has the eye, eye at A, but only a potential, <coughs> one potential eye at B. And depending how, how white continues here, white can get an eye um, at C. So white plays here. So this is setting up the eye, a forcing move at A, and then a potential eye at B. <coughs> so um, black plays here. So that settles the center, cent center shape. And again, white only has the one potential eye on the right side. 
So white has an eye on the lower side and needs to make one more eye. But white does this first. <laughs> um, this is an end game. Eyes, we don't need no stinking eyes. Uh, well, white's saving the group with right, this move. It's right, very efficient. Right. Um, by making this a forcing move. So white can oh, connect at A at or um, make an I at B. So those, those two points are mi I, and interchangeable points. So um, the thing about AlphaGo's games is that these groups, that um, they're alive, but uh, it's, the process is not finished um, by the time AlphaGo gets to the end game. So we, we see a lot of this stuff happening it's, at the end of the it's game. It's so much more comfortable with uncertainty than we are, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you, Nathan. I got it. Okay. Um, and so black switches the upper upper left corner. That's a big move. It also you saw black making the eye, so it's not as if black cannot live. But oh, it yeah. does it does yeah. change things a lot to have that second eye in the corner. And so now white starts to molest this black group. Now, black has two stones sort of hanging here, the, the two marked stones. Um, usually, if black wants to live, black would save the stone on the left. Let's just do the, that as a variation. But if black plays here, uh, there's no problem for black living. Sure, but then black would have to face this co, which right. would give, be giving white um, significant territory there. It's a big, it's a big of, move. Yeah. Um, so black starts playing the co, obviously. And so there, black doesn't bother to live with it. Black can actually lose this left side group if Black loses the call, so it's a very dangerous call, but they're just going to continue this call for a little bit. But now, uh, Black doesn't have enough call threats if Black spends too much time on the sure. call. So Black ignores that Atari, and suddenly this marked white group is in danger when Black cuts here. Wow. So it's a, a powerful counterattack. And Looking at this, it, it's it's hard to see where White's eyes are. So. I, I was just yeah. looking, and, yeah. I, and I so that's one of the other groups. One of <laughs> it's one of the other groups that was sort of undecided here. But you didn't uh, mention that group. I didn't mention it, did I? Um, so <laughs> okay, yeah. so Black plays. This is a sharp move um, because uh, there there's an issue with, for instance, White White White. White's forcing moves in this vicinity that are sure, sure. threatening the, the black connection. So black wants to play here, see if white will cut here, in which case black will have a much more solid shape nice. towards it. That yeah. would make a difference yeah, to how yeah. black attacks white. So white just connects. So this was actually a significant exchange that will change how the end game is played on the upper side. So black cuts white. And white plays here anyway. Um, so now white because of this exchange, has made a potential eye on the left side. Let's just spell it out by playing this exchange. Mm -hmm. So white has an eye here. Right. Um, anyway, one eye is not good enough. So white plays this one first. A potential eye on the left, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, this, um, this white has made an eye at A. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of a fake eye, but it's, it's, it's pretty close to an it's, eye. It's a pseudo eye. It's a pseudo eye. It depends on what happens. More important is the fact that White B has become an even bigger mm -hmm. threat, and so uh, taking it B is going to give Black a lot of trouble now. So yeah, of course Black is going to connect there, but well, no, um, Black Black needed to play this way to make a more secure life. Um, part of that is the fact that let's do that as a variation. In in this position, um, we have something like this: Black is alive, but when this move is forcing. Uh, this shape on the left here is actually already an eye for it. So mm -hmm. it is, this has changed from a potential eye to a position where white um, has a full eye there. Like if black plays here, white plays here. Or if black plays here, white can play here. So white already has an eye here. Mm -hmm. Because, let's mark the stone, because white has this stone on the first line, that makes the difference. So black is in the game, black plays this way, uh, sorry, uh, this way, in order to make a life and not give white this forcing move at the mark point. And yeah, so so it's the way they play the end game is it's really a lot of li life and death that is has to do with it. It's spectacular. And white still really... with this move, white still threatening to have to take it a and cause trouble. But so black just plays away. Um, <laughs> um, but of course yeah, black just plays away. So what what you might expect is black is going to do something to prevent white a. 
and then then white would live at B because white really needs the extra move at B after black protects at A. So the order that I would expect would be black A, white B, and then black moves to the upper yes. right corner. But no, they do it backwards. <laughs> then result is the same. And so it's exactly <laughs> the backward um, order of three moves that I expected. Um, and is it, 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 well, it doesn't, doesn't um, really matter? Black has enough cold threats to, to hang on to this goal for a little bit longer. I see. I see. Um, but doesn't have enough cold threats to kill the white group and mm -hmm. win the goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. black is just not going for the kill, um, but is not going to connect the goal either. So it, it works. But my way, my way would have worked too. It, I, it's just that AlphaGo just loves, loves to do it, just skip it. Just in this way, right just to that, yeah. keep me nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think it's I'm doing it on it's purpose. All about, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all about me. <laughs> Um, and now we're finally in an end game. Like real end game. It's real end game. Okay. It, no right. life and death. Um, uh, just big moves. Uh, but we have an interesting shape here. Because if white plays at B, there's going to be trouble. You see that? If white plays at B, let's do it on the board. Then black can connect here. Oh, white cannot cut the three stones off. It's no, going to be a, no, it's no, going to be a yeah, huge yeah, call. Yeah, yeah, boom. It's really dangerous. It's, oof. So black is going to get some inroads into white's territory. Then. That so is white so cuts. clever. And then, of course, um, this exchange. And then um, this move looks like a, uh, a mistake. Uh, don't you see the um, Oshi Tsubushi, the crushing move for white? Ooh, tell that word again. We oh, she wants to do that. Yeah, we'll have to do that in the random review. Huh? Encyclopedia. Yeah, encyclopedia, yeah. yeah. Uh, white can play here to crush. Did you see that, Chris? And then cover on the outside. Which, of course, in this case, is going to be a disaster for white. Because. because the... <laughs> Yes. Okay. Because it's going to be a call again. There it is. Yeah. There so it is. It, it, it's is. not practical. I couldn't good. see it, but it felt yeah, like yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know, because yeah. because it still has. I was going to be nasty and have you find no, that move and then no, kill no, you. No, not my current condition. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, so white plays away once, but is going to have to back off here. And and next time, I mean, if how black many points is that worth? Um, it was an extra two points two if points. you're comparing to to for instance if you're comparing to black playing. Uh, the mundane move here that that would just be this far. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an extra two points. Um, and so white backs off. Uh, but this time black has to connect. Like right. if black crawled once more, that would no, be this yeah, time white's going to take it. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so we're in the end game. Let's just go a bit further. Sure. No. Might as well take it to the end of the game. The, the end well, game is actually, there. you know, this is a case where um, white is not playing the optimal moves again and it's what alpha go oh, and it, it means that white's winning, winning already because right. there's this huge move in the center uh with white playing playing this point so there's this move here that is still still hanging around uh white the white had some opportunities to play this move but uh didn't bother to because he doesn't need it he doesn't need it it's it's, it's uh white's going to win even without playing that move so white's going to is waiting we, for black we would to play just that. do it we would just do it, yeah. Yeah, get the extra points, so you win by extra, yeah. Wow. Probably win by more, yeah, but um, it's just the way the program works. And so this is very straightforward. You can see that there are some <coughs> sort of danger points where mm -hmm. the groups seem to be in danger, but in actuality they're not. And so we have a very straightforward end, end game up to a certain point when, uh, you can see black is going a bit crazy here. It means that it knows that it's losing. Right. These are just meaningless moves. And pretty soon, the, and again, black is playing uh, co threat like moves. Um, but that's just what AlphaGo does when it's going to lose. OK, so the game finished here. Sure. Um, we still have a few points to play. So like there's A, B, C, D, E. Uh, I mean, the game ends, the points end after white A, B, C, D. The, 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 those are four points. Um, a and B are mei, basically. Um, white can play B and C or can play A. But we'll not be getting both of those. And then there's a final point at D. Mm -hmm. And then you can count it to find that white is won by half a point. And people who do want to check my count would have to 
Um, remember that E is a point that black is going to have to put a stone in. Right. So that makes a difference whether you're counting Chinese rules or Japanese rules, because in Chinese rules it will um, make a difference to the number of stones white can put in the dominant points. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in Japanese rules, of course, it's just a difference of one point to the size of black's territory. But you will find that black wins by half a point in, when counting territory or one fourth of a stone mm -hmm. when counting in Chinese rules. So white knew it was winning. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't play the best end game, but it, uh, it played an end game that could win the game for it. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, just an amazing game. And, and it was, again, you know, over the last few days, you've been here at the National Go Center here in Washington, D.C., and, you know, spent some time with some kids, uh, did the commentaries on the, um, I think we were looking at uh, five, six dons, maybe. Is that right, Nathan? I think that's what we were at the game. The top tables, yeah. Top tables, yeah. yeah. Seven, so we had some seven, seven yeah, some seven dons, so some top amateurs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we were, and then uh, and then now we've done some some you know back to some alpha go. So we've really had uh, quite a yeah quite a range of stuff. Quite a range. Like some of the people today were probably um, high cues. Well, maybe not some double, double digit. digit maybe up to that. Point? Maybe single no. digit cues. I think um, we they were pretty. I think there were at least some seven cues. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So up to alpha go, that's probably. Um, I don't know. Probably about <laughs> twenty ranks or something. Twenty ranks. Yeah. Well, uh, so just a couple of things before I wrap up. I mean, first of all, I, I know that uh, people really, you know, it's a it's a long way for you to come, and it's a it's a big investment of time, and we should just uh, once again a big uh, big appreciation to mm -hmm. Neil Kean. Well, it was, yeah, it was uh, worth it for me to see the setup you have. You like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, great. So you're going to be coming back then, yes? Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Uh, but also to uh, the Iwamoto uh, North American uh, folks, uh, foundation folks, enough uh, for, for bringing you here and setting this up, um, and, and to you for taking the time, because you're the one that's got to get on the plane and yeah. take time away from your family and your dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say, bring your dog. No, right. that, would not, that would not work. Mm -hmm. uh, but to come, and, and I know that people really appreciated uh, you know, you coming and doing that. So I think it was really cool to have all of those different kinds of, of uh, experiences and, and different levels mm -hmm. uh, and to, to give us that, that time. Um, and also just to have this, uh, this broadcasting center here at the, the National Go Center. I don't know that we had this exactly in mind when we set it up. I think it was more to have a, a place uh, here in the nation's capital, mm -hmm. uh, but it makes complete sense. And so... Yes. Um, for, for you to be here makes complete sense, and, that's, and you were here when we when we uh, opened, opened it last yes, year. Yes, so, so it's my a, second time. Everything is coming around. It's all yeah. it's all mm -hmm. going according to plan. So thank you, thank you, of course, and we look forward to uh, doing more of these in our new series, the uh, the yes. Random Encyclopedia of Go or yeah. Go commentaries. Um, and uh, and uh, just uh, one final reminder: uh, if you're enjoying all of this amazing free content uh, from the American Go Association, and I'm sure you are. Uh, two things, uh, make sure to you know use the comments section, let us know what you think. If you've got questions or comments, uh, we, we, try, we do read them all. Uh, we try to be responsive to that. Uh, but also take time to, to join the, the Go Association. Uh, we really are, are trying to, to do our best uh, to make Go comp popular and to bring it to more folks and uh, that takes money. This, uh, there's a lot of volunteer time that went into setting this uh, Go uh, broadcast center up, uh, but there's also took money to do that and uh, that came from the American Go Association and some from the National Go Center. Uh, so take, uh, take some time to join the, uh, the American Go Association, usgo.org, lots of great stuff there online. And last and definitely not least, uh, Nathan Epstein, has been uh, working really, really hard uh, to, to just help set the center up and to make it run. And there's all kinds of things that he's doing that I, I'm, I'm really impressed. I don't know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't completely understand it, um, but it's, it's good to see how it works and uh, really appreciate all your work, Nathan. Uh, 
Uh, and oh, Nathan says you can follow him on Twitter. Oh, you should definitely do that. Then, what's uh, there's going to be a link in the description so you can do that. Um, and we'll probably we'll get Nathan on camera at some point with one of these uh, one of these Twitch feeds that we're, we're going to start doing here, so you'll be able to get to know Nathan better. Uh, and and we'll look to get you on Twitch as well. I'm not sure how technically we do that, but I think we can do that. We, Nathan says we can do it. Nathan okay. says we can do it. All right, then we're going to get you on Twitch. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're not a big enough star. Oh, I was on gonna... Twitch yesterday. That's right, you were on Twitch yesterday. Yeah. That's right. So people enjoyed that. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Nathan. And of course, thanks to all of you for watching.